It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time-poor parent who just wants answers now. Hello, this is Dr. Justin Coulson. Thank you so much for joining me on the Happy Families Podcast today. I've got a guest with me that I'm uh, I'm really grateful to be able to speak to um, about a topic that is really challenging. And I know that it's the start of a year and we're supposed to have that great energy and feel excited about life, but the reality is sometimes hard things happen at inconvenient times, like at the start of the year when we're supposed to be energetic and excited about life, but but we're not. Today, we're going to talk about grief, specifically grief and children. My guest on the Happy Families podcast today is a lady called Christy Thomas, who is the director and manager, CEO of Feel the Magic. Christy, really nice to have you on the podcast today. Uh, our conversation is about grief, but When it comes to this idea of Feel the Magic and the role that you play, can you tell me a bit about who you are and what you do? Thank you so much for having me to talk about such an awkward, uncomfortable topic as well, especially when we're talking about grief and kids. So my name is Christy Thomas. I'm actually the co-founder of Feel the Magic and um, Feel the Magic was born out of my own childhood bereavement as well as um, I co-founded with my husband who had lost both his parents by the time he was 30. And what we realised actually here in Australia is that there's minimal resources for children and parents to access to um, help kids through the worst time possible. I don't know if you know this, but one in 20 kids here in Australia will actually lose a parent before they turn 18. One-fifth of kids will lose a parent to to death Mm. before they turn 18. By the time they're 18. Yeah. So we're not... That's not including sibling loss or uh, we also deal with guardian loss so that those stats are not available to us here in Australia and also, you know, any other kind of bereavement that a child might have when they're when they're younger. Yeah, so when I hear you share those numbers, I'm I'm really surprised. And the reason for it is when, when we think of high mortality in families, I kind of go back to like the, the 1500s or the 1800s. It doesn't feel like that's what would happen today. So, uh, in fact, maybe I can share a, a brief story to highlight just how challenging it is, though, to, to put this into perspective. In all the years that I've been doing the work that I do, only once have I had to speak with a parent who was uh, helping her children go through bereavement. As it happened, these two girls who were under the age of 10 had lost their dad to suicide. Uh, they, were, they were grieving. And when I spoke to this particular mum, I said, well, how can I help you most? And she said, I need to help my children with bereavement. And she explained the situation. I said, okay, well, I, I, I can definitely help with that. And she said, no, 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 that's, that's not the bereavement that I'm worried about. I said, well, I, I'm not quite sure I am following. What, it, what is it that's going on? And she said, I've just received a terminal diagnosis mm-hmm. and I have around about six weeks left and uh, my children are going to be on their own. They're going to be living with their grandparents and their aunties and I need to be able to help them through it. So these these poor kids were going to become orphans in the space of 12 months losing losing both parents. Obviously oh. devastating, catastrophic for them. Can you tell me a bit about uh, Feel the Magic, the organisation yourselves? And and then I'd like to talk more about what grief does to a child because clearly you and your husband have both been through some, mm-hmm. some, uh, some grief of your own. So Feel the Magic support kids who have age 7 to 17 who have lost a parent, sibling or legal guardian. And basically we we bring them into different types of camps. So we do them face-to-face and virtually. And we basically teach them emotional literacy, coping strategies. Um, we give them tools to actually self-regulate and self-soothe. And then the biggest thing that sort of, amazing that comes along with these programs is that they get to meet other kids like them and part of what grief does to a kid is it isolates them they become very different they don't know anyone else that's going through what they are they don't know how to talk about it with other people and so instantly when they meet other kids who are going through the same thing suddenly their their world opens up to say i'm not the only one and there's a way forward so in particular, I want to talk about Camp Magic because that's our three-day signature camp. And in that in that program, we match every grieving child with a mentor, an adult mentor who comes along the journey with them. So they have someone sitting beside them in their journey to experience, you know, every session that we do, but there's someone with, there with them to support them. 
So we're not in the business of fixing kids. We're there to empower them to actually self-soothe, self-regulate and take control of their grief moving forward. I'm listening to what you're talking about in terms of the challenges that kids have, uh, feeling isolated, feeling like they've, I guess, lost part of their identity when they lose a parent and, and the way they, they look for somebody who will understand, somebody who would, would empathise. In all of the research that I've done, this is an area that I've never investigated. Uh, I, I'm curious if you can explain any other findings from a research point of view in terms of how children respond to, how they cope with the loss and the subsequent grieving of a parent. Yeah, there's some really obvious things that happen to a kid um, just from speaking to hundreds of families and parents of kids who have lost someone significant. One of the main things is they really suffer with anxiety or separation anxiety, especially if they've lost a parent. So if they've lost a parent, they become very, very, very careful around the parent who's left. So they don't want to leave them because they're scared of losing them as well. Um, so that's one thing. Any other behaviours like, you know, acting out or their emotional dysregulation and their reaction to th- things can be quite overwhelming, especially for a parent who's grieving as well. So managing that can be really difficult. Um, isolation, and then they're much more likely in their teen years to withdraw and, you know, be involved in risk-taking behaviours. And sadly, research has shown that um, a child who has had a significant bereavement before the age of 18 is six times more likely to die by suicide. So we really look at the work that we do as early intervention to ensure that that child doesn't have lifelong mental health issues. Yeah, life-saving. Um, uh, Christy, thank you for sharing those, th- those research outcomes to something that's so challenging. Yeah. How do you recommend that parents respond to children when they're dealing with loss and grief. So if we would look at it developmentally, I know that you said that what you do in your organisation in Feel the Magic is primarily focused on kids from seven through 17. But if we start just with younger children, let's say toddlers and preschoolers, and then we can talk about the bigger kids after that, what what do you recommend parents do if, if the children have lost a parent? The number one thing we recommend is for the parent to absolutely seek support and help for themselves to ensure that they're modelling um, healthy grieving so that the child can look to them. Right. And that wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter if the child was little or big in that case. Just just look after you. Look after you. Ask for help. Accept help when it's offered because people do come to the party with support. Feel it to heal it is what we say. You've got to absolutely face that grief to ensure that you can move forward later. And, and walk alongside your grief. So when we're talking toddler age, um, being honest across all ages around what's happened, being re- using really direct language, so not being vague around, oh, they've gone away because you don't want to create opportunities for the child to think, oh, they're coming back. Um, or or so, to think that other people are going to go away and they'll also oh, leave their life. So using words like dead, died is really important so that, Maybe they don't understand what that word means. They can seek out what that word does mean, but it's the truth of what's happened. So hearing you say that, I, and I know, I know that it's true. I've, I've written articles about this <laughs> side of things, and, and I know what the research says around this, yeah. and yet hearing you say it, it's, there's, there's that part of me that wants to say, no, no, but can we just soften a little bit for the kids? Yeah. Can we just make yeah. it a little bit more palatable, a little bit nicer, a little bit more gentle? Yeah. Because it's so, it's such a heavy word. It's so, yeah. it's so so final. Yes. And and that's what we do as a human race is we want to care for that child who's going to be in pain when mm. you deliver a message like daddy's died or mum's died. But being clear and direct is really important for their for their growth. In terms of other things that you can do for little kids. Uh, yeah, who, who are probably hugs. going to be confused. Uh, lots of hugs. Right? Hugs. Yep. Connection, time, spending time with them, creating rituals around their loved one. Um, mm, beautiful. In terms of memorial type things is really important. Um, 
crafting with them and doing things that are quite creative can help um, bring out, you know, have, have having chats with them about their grief. So that's for the little ones. And then when we're talking seven to nine, very similar. They just want connection with their parents. They really do. They just need love, care, support, direct language, and a safe space to be able to share what, what they're going through. When we're talking 10 to 13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as they start to get older yeah. and move towards those tween and teen years, I, I yeah. presume that it changes because their responses change, right? I have to say this is the most popular age group where we have children come into the programs. Sometimes seven to nine, they're still too young to process and coming in, especially being left alone. Um, but 10 to 13 seems to be our target area because – I hate to say it, but the parent still has some say over what the child does so they can easily come to our programs, but um, they get so much out of having been connected with other kids their age, having a safe space where the pa- they're not protecting their parents' feelings or other people's feelings where they can share how they feel is so incredibly impactful for them. Yeah, so again, direct language, lots of connection. Um, but this age group really, and and I would say teens, when I'm talking 14 to 17, a lot of them lose sight of what makes them feel good. So once they may have been somebody who, oh, I've heard this story a million times, but say we had a child who loved playing football and it was something that they did with their dad very often. And the minute dad passed away, no more football. It just was too hard. But the parent who's parenting or the mum who's parenting this child knows that football would be really good for him. So helping the child, supporting the child to find or get back to activities that make them feel good. Christy, you you mentioned before about looking after yourself as a parent. How much of our ability to guide our children through their grief is predicted by or, or reliant on our ability to be well ourselves? It's hard to gauge how much, but I think, like I said at the top, it's it's almost the, the most important thing. If you care for yourself and your own grief, then you're modelling that behaviour and you can then therefore be much more connected with your child. If you're pushing it down, it's hard to connect outwards because you're so holding so tight onto feelings that hurt or are painful I think parents are just scared that if they let it out, it's never going to stop, and especially kids too. And often I meet children who hold it in because they don't want to upset mum or dad as well. But what we find is, um, you know, if you let it out, it doesn't last forever and it kind of reduces the pain a bit for next time and if they become few and far between, but then they also get easier. And then outside of letting it out, there's this huge relief. Like I see it at Camp Magic all the time. We'll go into one of the therapeutic sessions and there'll be kids crying and having it, you know, talking and sharing their feelings. And it's it's been a really heavy moment. And not more than 10 minutes later, they're out kicking a football or playing with a ball and laughing and having fun. So Kids, when given an opportunity, are really good at grieving because they just get it. They're just so in tune with their emotions if they're given the space. Do you think that sometimes parents just try to fix things too fast? Oh, absolutely. It's hard not to. When you you see your child in pain um, and you're feeling that pain yourself, so you're really connected to their their pain as well, it's hard not to try to fix or want to fix. Mm. It's really hard. And at the same time, you're also trying to just get on with life, right? Like we've we've still got to go to school or we've still got to look after the house or go to work or uh, deal with all the other stuff that life demands of us. It's not like we can say, okay, uh, there has been a death and now we're going to take six weeks and do Mm. nothing but wear black and sit in ash and and grieve. That's that's not what we do in 2023, is it? It's it's not how our society works. Um, last question for you. I mean, I, I'd love to. I'd love to talk to you about this for so much longer. There's so much that we haven't even scratched the surface of. But if people want to find out more about Feel the Magic and Camp Magic, the work that you're doing, where would you send them? Where's the best place for them to go? 
our website is the best place, feelthemagic.org.au. We've got all the information you need to know about what programs we have, where and when. Also, we have this amazing grief resource hub. So you can go on there and find books and um, videos and podcasts and other organisations who deal with grief and bereavement. So there's a real hub there that you can go to for any kind of resources that you might need. Um, and we have an incredible intake officer. Her name's Lauren. If you fill out an inquiry form, she'll get in contact with you. And if you want to talk by email, if you want to talk by a text or on the phone, she's available to you anytime. So. Wow. One in 20 under 18 are going through this at some point in their life. Uh, I, th- I think the work you do really matters. Christy, it's been a delight to talk with you. That's Christy Thomas from Feel the Magic. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Ruan from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. For more info, please visit happyfamilies.com.au and check out our show notes for more about Feel the Magic.